He is worthy to be praised. And it is an awesome thing for you and I to wake up in the morning and to realize that it is possible for us human beings to have a personal relationship with our creator. That's awesome. To have a personal relationship with our God, to wake up and know that he's there, that he's the one watching over us as we took rest in the night and some of you getting ready around the world to take rest now. And it's just an amazing thing to know that as a Christian, we can have a personal intimate relationship with God Almighty. Uh, in my book, that is now the foundation for everything. It's it's like that's that's the awesome thing about being a Christian uh, is that Christianity was never intended to be a religion. Jesus didn't die, so you can you know uh, invent another religion, uh, but so that we could have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with him so that we can look at him right in his face and not fall dead. Like they couldn't do that in the old covenant. Uh, they couldn't hardly touch the mountain. The Bible says, don't touch it lest you die. But we now carry his presence on the inside of us. We now have a personal relationship with God where he says, uh, he says, my sheep hear my voice. So we have access to his voice. We have access to the Holy Spirit that moved on the face of the water, waiting on God to say something. And what God said, the Holy Spirit brought it to pass. That's powerful, isn't it? The Bible says Spirit of God moved on the face of the water. Hallelujah. And now that Holy Spirit of God lives on the inside of us and we can have an intimate relationship with him. So, hey, dude, don't neglect this powerful, powerful privilege of having an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit and make it make it a primary situation in your life. Um, let's let's this is so powerful to me because it's like, you know, to me, it's it's the it's the number one thing. It, it's what makes me a Christian. I, I'm, I'm a Christian because Jesus lives on the inside of me. You're a Christian because Jesus lives on the inside of you. And there's no way I want to neglect this privilege of having a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't even know how people think they can make it in a, in a world like today without having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, one of the things I understand about unity, uh, unity is expensive. Unity is expensive. And somebody says, what do you mean by that? Well, selflessness is the currency for unity. Selflessness is the currency for unity. And that, that means that we're going to have to figure out how to take ourselves out of our own circle and each person put somebody else in that circle. It, it doesn't just voila, show up. Selflessness is the currency for unity. And I believe if our churches are going to experience unity, and if the body of Christ is going to experience unity and if our family will experience unity and if our marriages are to experience unity, then selflessness is going to be what you got to pay in order to see that happen in your life. That was so big on the inside of me this morning. That, uh, you know, obviously the word of God is for unity. Uh, every man and woman of God should be for unity. The vision is not of God. Every man of God should be for unity. Every woman of God should be for, for unity. But it costs. And I'm putting this out to you this morning. Are you willing to pay 
the price for unity in, in your marriage. Uh, you can, you can get a, you can get a divorce and you can quit on your development. Hmm. I'm going to say that again. You can get a divorce and quit on your development. Hmm. A lot of people want to run away from when it gets hard or difficult or uncomfortable because they don't recognize this is an opportunity to develop. Uh, it's an opportunity to develop. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. An opportunity to develop. Whatever you may be going through in your marriage is an opportunity to develop. Now, you're a free moral agent, so you can you can quit on that marriage and you can divorce and all that kind of stuff. But what whatever final test you refuse to take, you're going to have to take it again. So if you don't take it with with this uh, uh, person that you're married to, you're going to take it with the next one or with the next one. You're going to take it. It's it's like forget about promotion. Uh, some people think, well, I'm going to move to a new city. I'm going to get a new job. I'm going to get new people. But the same old you with the same old issue keep showing up. And so you're going to you're going to have to uh, you're going to take that test anyway. So you might as well recognize that when those rough issues show up in your life, that is an opportunity for development. And there's a little slight difference between growth and development. Some can grow, uh, you know, just by natural means. If you nourish yourself and go to bed and rest, no, you know, in the natural, you grow. But if you're trying to develop your physical body, that's going to require some work. It's going to require some weight training. It's going to require some proper dieting. You know, that's just not going to happen on itself. Development doesn't just happen by not, uh, you know, being committed to, to something. And so likewise, marriage should be something that is continuously in development. And so many people are running away from their development. So many people are running away from their development. And, um, you know, I, I just think it's so important. Your your development um, is so important because God wants to take you to the next level. God wants to bring you to another position in your life if you don't run away from the development. It's hard sometimes. It's difficult sometimes. It's painful sometimes. Uh, it's condemning sometimes it's all kinds of stuff but go ahead and develop uh it, it may shine a light on you and you see things about yourself that you never wanted to admit that was true you know let me say something about leadership leadership the, the greatest enemy to a leader is a yes man listen to me the greatest enemy to a leader is a yes man. And, 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 and I don't believe it's just in leadership, but um, I believe also that, you know, if you're the leader of your home or, or whatever, the greatest enemy to leadership is a yes man. So don't be afraid of recognizing and realizing things about yourself look at all of these things as opportunities to grow to the next level to grow to the next level amen uh let me let me say something about what we're doing you know what i'm doing every morning is i'm here to try to encourage you i'm here to try to you know lift you up feed you love you i'm not here to 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 try to get names and all that stuff. Sometimes people take advantage of the time we have together, but don't don't be distracted by that. We're here to be uh, ministered to 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 release the power of God 
and all those those kind of things. I mean, it's so, so, so very important that we as the body of Christ begin to operate in our authority. And a lot of times when we do that, there are people that just want to interfere and take advantage of that kind of thing and block them and just let's just keep going and do what we got to do. Um, so I've got I've got one more area I'm going to share with you today on how to receive the promise. And uh, we're going to make some confessions, Psalms 91. But just take hold of some of those things I just told you, the price of unity, selflessness and be willing to uh, allow development to take place to take you to the next level. And then thirdly, uh, you want to make sure uh, that uh, you don't fall victim to yes people. Don't hang. Don't 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 be comfortable with people always telling you what you want to hear. You might want to have somebody in your life that will tell you some things that you need to hear. <laughs> Amen. So, but that's a big thing, man. So, so, so big. So believe God that he'll send you somebody in your life that will speak the truth in love. That will speak the truth in love. Amen. And so I love you and I thank God for you. And uh, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go ahead and rock and roll. And do what need to be done. First of all, let's go ahead and get ourselves uh, Psalms 91 equipped. Are you ready? Repeat after me. I declare that I will dwell in the shelter of the Most High God. I declare that I will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I declare that God is my refuge and my fortress. I declare that you are my God in whom I trust and with great confidence in whom I will rely. I declare that God will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every disease. I declare that I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. I declare that God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I declare that I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor of the shadow of the arrows that fly in the day. I declare that I will not dread any disease that stalks in the darkness nor any disaster that strikes at midday. I declare that because God is my refuge and the almighty God of my home, no evil can befall me and no plague can come near my dwelling. I declare that God has ordered his angels to guard, defend, and protect me in my house. I declare that God's armies of heaven will keep me from falling. I will walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my path. I declare that because of God's love for me, I will call upon him. He will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me from all my fears. And he will honor me with his presence and power. I declare that he will reward me with long life and show me his salvation. Your Psalm 91 equipped. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, let's go ahead and let's make some declarations over your day today. Let's set your course for your life today with the words of your mouth. Ready? I declare today that I will not be defeated, discouraged, depressed, disappointed, addicted, sick, tired, lazy, or weary today. I am the head. I have insight, I have wisdom, I have ideas, I have authority, and I have health. 
I exercise my authority today with my words and I decree a thing and it is so. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me. As I speak words today, they come to pass. They go before me. They bring the things to pass that I desire and they stop all attacks, assaults, oppression, poverty, pride, fear, unforgiveness, lack, and insufficiency from coming to my life. God is on my side today, and therefore I cannot be defeated. His favor surrounds me today as a shield. I expect favor today from heaven and from earth. Jesus had favor with, with God and man. And as he is, so am I on this earth. Therefore, I have favor with God and man. I expect favor in my home, favor on my job, favor in my business, favor in my ministry, favor with my finances, and favor in every deal I'm involved in. I have the wisdom of God today. I will think the right thoughts, say the right words, make the right decisions in every situation I face today. My mouth speaks wisdom. My heart is filled with understanding. I ask for and receive an abundant supply of wisdom and understanding today from God. Wisdom from above that is pure, peaceable, gentle, unwavering, and willing to yield without hypocrisy. In Jesus' name. I tell you, God is good, isn't he? God is so, 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 so good. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is so good. And I am grateful and I am thankful for his goodness. Amen. Uh, in Jesus' name. Oh, we love you guys so much. And uh, let me get started with some things. I'm going to review uh, all 16 steps and and uh, give you the last one today. We're talking about how to respond to the promises of God. Uh, you know, to pursue something means to carry on or to continue to course of action. And um, I just thank God that some great things are gonna gonna happen to you. So the first thing, if if you have an issue come in your life, the first thing you do, the priority in life is in, in dealing with that situation, whether it's sickness or whatever it may be, locate the promise that you are believing for in the word. So the first step, go to the word, locate the promise that you're believing for. That is priority. Problem comes, first action, go to the word and find the problem, or excuse me, find the promise that covers your situation. That's step number one. Step two, when you find that promise, believe it. Somebody asked me, how do you know you if you're believing or not? Well, the acid test to believe is the acid test to belief is rest. The acid test to belief is rest. Rest is the acid test. And uh, you should be at rest instead of at stress. Number three, settle that the promise is the will of God for you. Mark chapter 1, 40 and 42, you know, you, until the will of God is known, then your faith won't work. So once you find that promise, you should be saying to yourself, this is God's will for me. Because the word of God is the will of God, and that's God's will for you. The promises are in the word of God, the Bible. Okay, number four, ask God according to John 14, 13 through 14. Please read John 14, 13 through 14 and stand on that. That I ask, and according to John 14, 13 to 14, this is so. Amen. Number five, meditate on the promise daily. Meditate on the promise 
daily. Joshua 1 and 8 says, if you meditate on a word day and night, you will make your way prosperous and you'll have good success. The word meditate means to roll over in your mind, roll over in your thinking, just roll over and uh, think over it. And, and somebody says, how long do I meditate? You meditate on the word until what you're meditating on is bigger than the issue and the situation that is in your life. Okay. Number six, understand that nothing in the kingdom of God operates without faith, love, and patience. And so if things are going to operate um, in your life, if this promise is going to operate, then you got to receive it by faith. And then faith worketh by love. So it's not how much you love God, but how much you believe God loves you. And then you got to have the patience or remain consistently, constantly the same. Amen. Step number seven. Step number seven. Take the promise and turn it into a confession. Take the promise and turn it into a confession. And uh, when you do that, then you're going to begin to see some things like First Timothy 6 and 12 talks about. Romans 10 and 9 talks about take the promise you found and turn it in to a confession. Uh, and please understand something. Uh, it is so, so, so very important that when you confess the word of God and you speak the word of God out, you're you're knowing that you're releasing the power of God that's operating in your life. Amen. Number eight. Give voice to the promise and employ the em, employ the angels. Psalms 103, 19 through 20. Give voice to the promise and employ the angels. Psalms 103 says angels hearken after the voice of the word of God. Amen. Number nine. Uh, call things that be not as though they were. Call things that be not as though they were. Number 10, step 10, don't speak anything but the word of God concerning the matter. God told uh, my friend, I have told my people they can have what they say, but they keep saying what they have. Stop saying what you have because you can have what you say. So stop saying what you have. Amen. Step 11, believe that you've received the promise. Believe that you've received the promise. In other words, doubt will put your faith on hold. So believe that you've received the promise. Number 12. Step 12, forgive because you don't want unforgiveness to be a blessing blocker in your life. You don't want unforgiveness to be a blessing blocker in your life. Believe that you've received the promise. Amen. Uh, and then forgive and walk in forgiveness is number 12. Step 13, live in the fear of the Lord. Live in the fear of the Lord. The Bible says there's no want to those that fear God. Okay. Number 14, step 14, consistency is the key to the breakthrough. Consistency is the key to to the breakthrough. Number 15, trust in God. We told you that trust is the currency in the kingdom of God. Trust in God. Trust is the currency of the kingdom of God. And then number 16, the importance of prayer and fasting and the obedience of, to the faith. Um, Prayer is that communication that we have with God, but prayer is literally saying to God what uh, prayer is saying to God, what God has already said in his word. Uh, and that's something that you need to learn how to do as an individual. Stop making yourself a prayer project. God's very best is that you learn how to pray for yourself. Because remember, Christianity is a personal relationship with God. And it's so important that you learn how to pray for yourself. 
uh, intercession is fine, but I mean, come on, man, we got to learn how to pray for ourselves. I, I, I spend time praying to God. I spend time developing a relationship with God. Prayer is not just a monologue where you're doing all the talking. Prayer is a dialogue where you're talking and God is talking back to you. Now, if you're always making yourself a prayer project, when are you maturing enough so that you can not only talk to God, but God can talk back to you? Um, and so that's that's very, very, very important. Uh, there's some really weird stuff going on with people interceding for other folks. You need to learn how to pray for yourself. You need to learn how to spend time. Now, this is a great time to trust the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will teach you how to pray. And the Holy Spirit will also intercede for you. Uh, so again, Christianity is not a religion. We got to step away from some of that religious stuff. And we got to learn how to spend time praying to God and, you know, going to God and saying what God has already said in his word. So if you're praying for healing, you're not going to God and begging him to heal you. The right way to pray under the New Testament is going to God and say, Father, your word says that I'm healed. And so, Father, I thank you right now that I'm healed in Jesus name. That's simple. That's simple. And, you know, as you grow in your communication with God, um, your communication will turn into communion. And that's what God wants. God wants your communication to turn in communion. And the objective is to get you to commune with him. You can't do that if you're always making yourself a prayer project and always asking other people to pray for you. You are going to have to learn the importance of communicating with God so you and God can become one and then you can start communing with God. Amen. That's a powerful, powerful, powerful thing. And then fasting, I'll, I, I may make that just another step so I can talk about that tomorrow because fasting is really designed to get your thinking and your mind to line up with the word of God. Uh, it, it's so, so, so very important. So, so very important. So be careful not to fall prey to demonic activity that's got you doing a bunch of weird stuff that's not in the Bible. Here's one thing I've used for almost 40 years in, in, in ministry. If you're going to tell me something, I need to find it clearly in the Bible, in context, and with the my, with at least two or three witnesses. Because if you tell me this little weird thing and it's kind of spooky, there are a lot of spooky pookies out there. You got to be careful. And you're telling me something and it's not in the word. Why in the world should you re receive something that's not biblically based god and his word are one so god's not going to say something differently that's not in his word oh somebody wants to know what number 16 was uh it was prayer plus fasting plus obedience and i think i'm deciding like right now that i probably want to break those down a little bit so uh 16 you can be prayer and i guess we can put fasting 17 and then obedience to the faith uh, probably do that 18. That may be the best way for me to bring it to you. Uh, anyway, I hope you got something out today. Hope you feel better. Uh, we're praying for every person that's lost or that has family members that died because of COVID-19. Our prayers are with you. We send you our condolences, our love, and there are better days ahead. The best is yet to come. Uh, the best is yet to come. You hear me? The best is yet to come. Pull yourself out of that ditch. All is going to be so well with you. And uh, I love you. Uh, stay strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And um, I'll see you on tomorrow. God bless you all.